Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the one God, Amen. This morning's Gospel reading of the Samaritan woman and her conversion from a life of the greatness and evil of embarrassment and hateful life to a life of righteousness in Christ. And we remember this morning's gospel because it is in the midst of the fasting of Lent. We have four more weeks to go, so we're in the middle right now. For those who still have not fasted, uh, the church reminds us that there is still hope and there is still change. The same gospel reading is also read during the Sagda, during the afternoon of uh, the Pentecost feast. And it's only read, or it's only mentioned in the Gospel of St. John, not in the other three Gospels. But during Lent, we also always get a message of hope, and today's message is a message of change, and there is still hope for us, especially for those who are weak, for those who are depressed, for those who are deep down living in hurt themselves and also the surroundings and the people with them. And also today's message is that Christ wants us to shine in this world and be a beamer of light for everyone. And to, to the, today's service, our Lord does something so different from all the miracles and all the other services he has done. Today he serves one individual, not groups, but one person, and he goes to her to help her because he knows that she is very helpless. She needs someone to boost her and help her. So Christ, when he feels that we're down, we're unable to change, and the people around us are not helping us, he will come and give a hand to you. You might not notice it, but he does that a lot if you're feeling down. And today, even his disciples are not with him. So it's on one-on-one -on -one basis, which is so, so beautiful from Christ uh, to do that today. Now, we all have buckets at home, and with the buckets we use for many, many purposes. Sometimes we can put things in it and carry it around, or we put water in it and we can mop the kitchen or the bathroom and clean our cars. There's a lot of functions for the bucket. But what happens if the handle of that bucket breaks or is loose and we can't carry the bucket? We're going to do like a Samaritan woman, take the bucket and put it on our uh, shoulders and, and use it. But of course, this is not practical with us. But there is a reason for the bucket to not work. The woman at the well today knows the importance of the bucket. And she goes to Christ and asks him, how do you want to drink if you don't have anything to take the water and drink from, and the water is so deep. She's making an accurate assessment of the appearance, not knowing who this man is or who this Christ is. I hear her voice often when I'm standing near the deep well and I have no bucket. See, there are three types of wells each one of us might have. There is a deep well, the water is so deep you can't reach and you need something to reach it with. And there is the well that has a lot of water up until the brim of the well where you can actually scoop with your hand and drink from it. And of course, there's the well that is so dry and empty that you can't do anything, there's no water. Situations in our lives that make this world change. A lot of situations. 
For example, maybe there's a loved one who is struggling with an addiction, and today, not the addiction of only drugs and alcohol, but a lot of people are, especially the young generations, are addicted with the video games. And they, ve they, they feel hopeless. That the world is deep and you have no bucket. You can't do anything. It's not in your hands sometimes. Situations are very difficult. We may feel this way in the face of suffering the people in our lives and communities. And especially when there is child abuse or family violence at home or those who are helpless or homeless and in these days COVID who are very sick and those who pass away. We have a well that is deep and we have no bucket. Sometimes it's very difficult to give a helping hand and we are hopeless. How deep is your well that you are standing next to today? Think about it. So deep that you can't reach the water? Is it too dry? Or the water is so close to you, the top of the well, that you can drink with? What is the texture of the, wa the water? Is the water fresh and clear? Is the water mercury, unable to drink it? Is it too sultry? Is it too muddy? The well, obviously, is your heart. And the water is what is in your heart. You don't need this water if Christ himself is near the well or inside your heart. Our problem is that sometimes, or many of the times, we don't recognize Jesus. Some do, like the Samaritan woman who goes and tells her neighbors what has happened that Jesus has opened up and told her about her life. Some don't like, like the high priest and the, and, and the crowds, and some recognize Jesus, but do not have the courage to make a public witness like Nicodemus or Pilate. What is your depth? Deep as appearances, to stay at the, at the literal level rather than go deeper with Jesus to the spiritual level. People meet Jesus at different levels. How can a person enter back into the womb and be born again? This was Nicodemus' message. Even as he is standing before Christ and not knowing that Christ brings new birth, I have no one to put me into the water when the water is stirred up, says the paralyzed man sitting next to the water for 38 years in the pool of Bethsaida, while Jesus is the source of healing who is standing next to him. They can't see Jesus. They don't notice him. But today, the Samaritan woman, who was an unbeliever and don't believe in the temple or in Jerusalem or in the Hebrews that Christ is coming from them. She says to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Still Jesus speaks to her and offers her living water, a relationship between her and God through him that restores her dignity and community. And Jesus recognizes her limitations and weaknesses and still gives her living water because out of his love this living water is graces graces that we ask for that we get from above but why did the samaritan woman come to draw water at noon the hottest time of the day there's a reason because of her lifestyle she is embarrassed to meet anyone, and everyone during that time knows each other. A very small community, so they know who she is. She was embarrassed, and she was afraid to meet anyone. What are the places in my life where I am embarrassed, where I avoid interaction with others? 
think about it. Because of our sins, because of our weaknesses, because of the wrong that we do throughout our lives. There's a nice example of a father teaching his little girl how to swim for the first time. So he's in the pool and she's standing on the side and he's asking her to jump in. And she's looking at the water that's around him that's so deep and she's afraid to jump. And he calls her again, jump in, don't worry, I'll carry you. And she's afraid. Then he says to her, look into my eyes. She looks into his eyes and then he says, jump. And straight away the girl what, jumped into his arms and she was safe. We look around us, a lot of things that are happening around us that are hurtful and are sad and we concentrate on what's around us because we fear but with Christ if we concentrate on him then there's no fear we know that he'll take care of us and he'll support us and he'll take away that fear from our hearts what are the noonday wells of my life what keeps us away what is making us fearful from others Ask yourself, how do I put Jesus off with excuses, with problems or barriers? I don't have time. I don't have time to talk to you. I don't have time to live with you, to meet you. Or I haven't done this before, or my stuff is too complicated to be with you. I don't know how to find you in my mess. St. Augustine, concerning the Samaritan woman, says something very nice in reflection where he says that she is the symbol of the church, not yet made righteous. And righteousness follows from the conversation between Samaritan woman and Christ. We become enlightened and our eyes open to see the light. When we live in darkness, it's very difficult to see the light or to meet the light. And Christ wants us to be a beaman of light in this world, to shine in this world as Christians, as his children. There's a nice story about a man traveling by boat or a ship through the Antarctic. And he fell sick, very sick, and stayed in bed. He didn't move around, and it was dark time when he heard a shout, man overboard. And he is a person who likes to help, but he can't move, he can't do anything, and he is hopeless, laying in bed. So he thought of something that was really interesting. He put a lantern in front of the window of the ship, and that's all he can do. He couldn't do anything else. He couldn't save the man. So in the morning, when the man was saved at night, he said, as I was falling deep into the sea and my hand was reaching up, the light that was from this window saved my life where the sailor in the boat reached out and took my arm and he pulled me out. If it wasn't for this light, small light, I would have been dead and deep into the sea. All of us should shine a small light, emit a small light in our lives in front of the people, in front of the world that we live in and the people and the community that is around us. Try and do something that shows that we are the children of Christ and a light to this world. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.